All right, I'd like you to imagine that at that time, uh, you had invested $10,000. And you put that money in an index fund. We didn't have index funds then, but, but you, in effect, bought the S&P 500. Now, I would like you to think a while, and don't, do not change the slide here for a minute. I'd like you to think about how much that $10,000 would now be worth if you just had one basic premise, just like in buying a farm, you buy it to hold throughout your lifetime and depend, and you look to the output of the farm to determine whether you made a wise investment. You look to the output of the apartment house to decide whether you made a wise investment if you buy an apartment, small apartment house to hold for your life. And let's say instead you decided to put the $10,000 in and hold a piece of American business. Uh, and never look at another stock quote, never listen to another person give you advice or anything of the sort. I want you to think how much money you might have now. And now that you've got a number in your head, let's go to the next slide and we'll get the answer. You'd have $51 million and you wouldn't have had to do anything. You wouldn't have to understand accounting. You wouldn't have to look at your quotations every day like I did that first day. <laughs> I'd already lost $3.75 by the time I came home from school. Uh, all you had to do was figure that America was going to do well over time, that we would overcome the current difficulties, and that if America did well, American business would do well. You didn't have to pick out winning stocks. You didn't have to pick out a winning time or anything of the sort. You basically just had to make one investment decision in your life. And that wasn't the only time to do it. I mean, I could go back and pick other times that uh, would work out the even greater gains. But uh, as you listen to the questions and answers we give today, just remember that the, over, the overriding question is how is American business going to do over your investing lifetime? Uh, I would like to make one other comment because it's, it's a little bit interesting. Let's, let's say you'd taken that $10,000 and you'd listen to the prophets of doom and gloom around you and, and you'll get that constantly throughout your life. And instead you'd use the $10,000 to buy gold. Now, for your $10,000, you would have been able to buy about 300 ounces of gold. And while the businesses were reinvesting uh, in more plants and new inventions came along, you would go down every year into your, look in your safe deposit box, and you'd have your 300 ounces of gold. And you could look at it, and you could fondle it, and you could, I mean, whatever you wanted to do with it. But it didn't produce anything. It was never going to produce anything. And what would you have today? You would have 300 ounces of gold, just like you had in March of 1942. And it would be worth approximately $400,000. So if you decided to go with a non-productive asset, gold, instead of a productive asset, which actually was earning more money and reinvesting and paying dividends and maybe purchasing stock, whatever it might be, you would now have over 100 times uh, the value of what you would have had with a non-productive asset. In other words, for every dollar you have made in American business, you'd have less than a penny by of gain by buying in the store of value, which people tell you to run to every time you get scared by the headlines or something of the sort. It's, it's just remarkable uh, to me that we have operated in this country with the greatest tailwind at our back that you can imagine. It's an investor's haven. I mean, you can't really fail at it unless you buy the wrong stock or just get excited at the wrong time. But if you, if you own a cross-section of America and you put it your money in consistently over the years, uh, there's just there's no comparison against owning something that's going to produce nothing. And there, frankly, there's no comparison with trying to jump in and out of stocks and, and pay investment advisors. If you'd followed my advice, incidentally, 
or this retrospective advice, which is always so easy to give. Uh, if you follow that, of course, you're, there's one problem, buddy. Your, your friendly stockbroker would have starved to death. I mean, you know, and you could have gone to the funeral to atone for their fate. But the truth is, you would have been better off doing this than, than a very, very, very high percentage of investment professionals have done or people have done that are active. It, it's, it's very hard to move around successfully and beat really what can be done uh, with a very relaxed philosophy. And you do not have to be, you do not have to be, you do not have to know as much about accounting or stock market terminology or whatever else it may be or what the Fed is going to do next time and whether it's going to raise, raise three times or four times or two times. None of that counts at all really in a lifetime of investing. What, what counts is, is having a, a philosophy that, you've, that you stick with, that you understand why you're in it, and then you forget about doing things that you don't know how to do. So.